Well, the Toronto Raptors are going to be going home for Game 3. Down 2 nothing in the series as the Milwaukee Bucks stomp all over the Toronto Raptors, winning by 22 in the game 125-103. And right from the get-go, the Bucks were the much better team. They were making shots. They were getting stops. The Raptors were not making shots and were not getting stops. The Raptors in the first quarter were down 14. At one point, it was 17-18 in the first quarter. You can have a 35-point first quarter. 35-21 was a score in the, in the first quarter. Second quarter, minus 11. I mean, just another horrendous quarter. Raptors had by 24 at the, or sorry, 25 at the half. The offense, terrible. The defense, that much worse. But, you also have to give credit to the Milwaukee Bucks. We talked about it in the last video, guys. We talked about how Giannis didn't put up that Giannis type of night, 24 and 14. But they had Brooke Lopez, who was a freak. Well, Chris Middleton and Eric Blezzo, again, really haven't been X-Factors in the series. Series. Middleton only had 12 in the game. Blezo still only had 8. Hasn't hit double digits in the first two games. And Giannis had 13 and 7. Uh, sorry, 30 and 17. But it was the Malcolm Brogdon, George Hill, Ursan Ilyasovas that, that really propelled this team, the Milwaukee Bucks, to the win. Brogdon. Had uh, 14 off the bench in 25 minutes. George Hill had 13 on 5 of 8. Remember, he was 0 of 6 in Game 1. And Irsan Ilyasova not only took a ton of charges, had 17 points on 7 of 11 shooting, made a couple threes. That's all from their bench, guys. They had three guys in double figures off the bench. So you turn to the Toronto Raptors here. And they actually made a pretty big push in the second half. At one point, they brought it to a 13-point game. And we're like, wow, this team, is, is it over? Yeah. When the, when the Milwaukee Bucks have a 25-point lead at the half, and at one point, they have like a 29-point lead. I don't care how much you try and come back. They're going to beat you down. And they did. The Raptors made that punch in the third quarter. We're plus eight in the third quarter. They had 39-31. That's great and all, but in the end, they made that punch at the end of the third quarter that pushed them ahead, and that was all she wrote. Raptors were minus five in the fourth quarter, and they lose by 22. Yeah, 22. And there's a lot of question marks heading into game three for the Raptors. What the hell's going on with Pascal Siakam? Excuse the language there, but what the heck's going on with him? People are going to say he's injured, and you know what? He might be. But at this point in the year, everybody's banged up. Look at Lowry. He's got a flipping like, cast on his hand. And he had 15. Uh, he shot 4 of 13 and 2 of 9 from 3. Wasn't great. But Pascal Siakam, guys, not only did he foul out, he had eight points on four or nine shooting, one rebound, couple assists, m missed both threes he took, was not very good defensively, and he was the worst plus minus on the Raptors at minus 21. That's our second scoring option, people! And when Lowry's not knocking down 30, you need Pascal to be good, and he wasn't. I mean, yeah, you could say, well, you know, we only shot four of nine, pretty good percentage. He took nine shots. In the last game, he took 20. I don't know. Kawhi Leonard, that's more like Kawhi. 31 points, eight boards, 10 of 18 shooting, 10 of 10 from the free throw line. But really no help. Now, Danny Green, still in the liability out there. Eight points, four boards on two of six shooting, guys. He was... Well, he was 2 of 4 from 3, but again, he's going to be that X factor. When you're hot, feed him. And Marcus Gasol started out the game 0 of 4, ends the game 1 of 9. He's been horrendous in the first two games. Why Marcus Gasol in the first few minutes of the game took four shots is beyond me. Plus, he missed all four. I don't know. 
Now, Serge Ibaka had a pretty good, a much better ball game than than the, than the prior. He had uh, eight points and ten rebounds on four of nine shooting, and uh, he, I thought he was not bad. He was only minus four while he was out there. Good job there. Uh, Fred Van Vliet. I mean, again, he only shot he only shot five shots, but he was two of five. Had five points in the game. Made one three. Took one three and a couple assists. But again, that's in twenty four minutes of work, guys. Not a lot of stuff being done. And a guy that I personally believe going into game three. And I, look, I could be crazy saying this, but you just going to leave it and let it go the same? Why not take out Danny Green and put out Norman Powell? Powell was, was all right in game one. He had six points in like 10 minutes and he had made a couple shots. Today, he made some big shots. I mean, I do whatever kind of big shot you want to take from this game, I guess. But he had 14 points on 6 of 9 shooting. He was 2 of 4 from 3. He was only a minus 5. He, Norman Powell wasn't bad. And like I said, Danny Green hasn't been very good offensively. At all. Other than the 5 of 7 from 3 against Philly in that one game. Where has he been? People are going to say, well, he's been alright defensively. You gave up 125 points. You scored 103. You scored 100 in the last game. This team needs to get their offense going. And it, it needs to happen. Um, that's my personal thought on what, what uh, a little change should happen in the starting unit next game. Uh, do you maybe move a guy like Pascal to the bench and then bring in Ibaka as a starting unit? I, like, I don't think we're going to go with that extravagant. But, again, I think a move like Norman Powell might not be a bad idea because he had a great game today. And Danny Green really didn't have a good game at all. And he didn't have a good game one. And he really hasn't been well lately. Why not give him a chance? You've lost the first two games. You need something at home. Shake it up a bit. Speaking of Game 3 at Scotiabank Arena, that game goes on Sunday night, 7 o'clock tip-off there in Toronto. And look, we, I'm going to sit here and tell it to everybody. And I think we, I mean, we all know it, right? Must win. Period. You lose, you're down 3 nothing. And Raptor fans, we have, we've gotten used to being down 3 nothing in series. More or less LeBron, we've been used to being down uh, 2. And uh, not that anymore. And it's funny. LeBron James, for the longest time, has been known as the greatest player in the NBA, and rightfully so. He leaves, and we're all like, oh, that's so great, it's so great. Oh, Giannis, uh, yeah, he's the best player in the league now. Oh, great. <laughs> that's fantastic. He's the Greek freak for a reason, guys. I mean, he's a fantastic player. The Milwaukee Bucks, as we've seen in Games 1 and Game 2, are, are is a fantastic ball club. They have the really passionate fans there in, in Milwaukee. You see it. And look, it's 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 the Raptors having a tough time. They only shot 42% from the field, 31% from three. But we talked about it uh, in the last video. We talked about it. We said we said Milwaukee's not going to shoot 25% or 28% from three in the in every game this year. I think they they shot that in game one. They're not going to do that. They shot 30 32% from three here. But for the most part of the game, when they built that lead up, they were dynamite from beyond the arc. They only made 13 threes, or 13 for 41, 32%, not very good. But it doesn't really matter because they made their shots count. Now, the Bucs did go to the free throw line 10 more times than the Toronto Raptors. Uh, if you want to look into that, you can go right ahead. But again, the rebounding category, it still kills the Raptors in today's game. Minus 13 in the rebounds, minus 5, 11 to 6 in the offensive glass. Assists, the Raptors didn't even crack 20 assists. They had 19. They, the Bucks had 27. They move the ball. They get their wide open looks. They make their shots. Period. That's the way it is. Uh, turnovers 13 to seven. Raptors had the Raptors had 13 turnovers. The Bucks had seven. Uh, that that's not gonna that's not gonna work. Sorry, you you just can't turn the ball over a lot of times against these guys. And listen to this, guys. Here, first off, the Raptors never led in this game, and uh, points in the paint were minus four. Uh, so the Bucks, uh, Bucks won that uh, by four. Uh, second chance points off of those offensive rebounds. The Bucks were plus 10, 17 to seven. Fast break points off of those turnovers. And in obviously on the fast break, 28-9, or sorry, 28-19 uh, in favor of the Bucks. And points off of turnovers, 19 to eight in favor of the Bucks. It, guys, look. You can't turn the ball over against this team. You get wide open shots, you damn well make your wide open shots. And the Raptors just have not done so. They, they really haven't. 
And like I said, like I've said over and over, you have to give credit to the Bucks. Look, what am I going to bash them for? Well, this guy said this is this guy. Look, for Philly, we can bash Joel Embiid because he was a flipping airplane. But what can, what can we say about the Bucks? They're playing great basketball and they're cleaning our clocks. I mean, that's it, guys. I mean, look, it, game three goes on Sunday night in Toronto, and it's a must win. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You win that, you're, you're still in a tough situation, but at least you're it's a 2-1 series instead of being down 3 nothing, And then having to win four straight, which is next to impossible. So... Guys, I, mean, I don't really know what else to say, guys. I mean, the Raptors do not play a great ball game today. They do not come out of the gate strong. And look, the difference between what the, what the Raptors did in game one when they came out of the gate strong and what the Bucks did today. And uh, look, th this was the difference. The Raptors came out in the first quarter and were dominant. A plus 11 in game one. They were plus 14 in game one uh, in game two. Not a big difference. But they came on in, game, in the second quarter in game one, which ended up bringing that lead down a bit. Raptors... Total opposite. Caved in, fell apart, minus 11 in that quarter, and you're down by 25. Big difference, guys. For the Raptors, back to the drawing board. That's all. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Uh, this series does not look good for Raptor fans. And I know you haven't lost a home game yet, so you're never really in trouble until you lose a home game. But you can't, you can't you know, say, well, we'll win all three against the Bucks at home, and then we at least got to get one on the road. It's next to him. Guys, th this team is dynamite. They're incredible. Got to take it one game at a time, I guess. All right, so Sunday at 7 o'clock is, is game three of this seven-game series against the Bucks. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and you guys did not enjoy the ball game. If you're a Raptor fan, if you're a Bucks fan, if you enjoyed the video and the game, smack that like button to appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys are not already. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on this game? What are your thoughts on Danny Green, Marcus Saul, all these guys? And, and also, any lineup changes that you have going into Game 3? Do you agree with my whole thing about Danny Green for uh, Norman Powell? Now, you're again, defensively, maybe when it comes to Danny Green, you're missing a little bit of that. But offensively, Norman Powell, uh, look, he's been the better player in the series than Danny Green, period. So, I mean, you got to try and find some sort of spark. And can it be that? Maybe. I don't know. I don't hear your guys' take on that. Any other lineup changes you guys have in store? And how big of a loss is, the, is OG and Anobi? I mean, you can, you, you're can you seeing it now. You know, watching Pascal try and guard Giannis, it's tough. You know, it really is tough on him, especially if he is injured, right? And, and having OG against LeBron last year, you would be able to place him on uh, Giannis coming off the bench, right? So... Uh, look, it, it, you can't blame. You can't say, "Well, if we had OG, we'd be winning this year." No, you, you can't say that because we'll never know. But if you're the Raptors, like I said, you get back on the drawing board, right? So you know what, guys? Uh, Evan and I will talk to you as podcast edition. It'll probably be either. I think it'll probably be on Tuesday, uh, Tuesday afternoon. Link is in the description for the podcast channel, guys, and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up, send me a DM. I do all that great stuff, and I will talk to you guys. Blue Jays edition, and you know what? I watched more Blue Jays tonight than I did the Raptors. That tells you how bad this game was. As they crushed the Chicago White Sox 10-2 in Chicago. All right. And, and for the Toronto Raptors, guys, we'll talk to you guys on uh, on Sunday night for Game 3 of the Best of 7 Series against the Milwaukee Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals. For the Raptors, you got to try and say, all right, we're at home. The fans, look, I don't care how drained you are right now and, and how you don't feel confident right now. You get down there. If you're going to the ball game, you get down there and you go as loud as you can. Let the Raptors feed off the energy in the crowd and see if they can pull out a victory there in game three. I don't know what to expect, but that's the crazy thing about sports. That's why we watch them. You never know what's going to happen. All right, so guys, uh, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys then.